So, Mr. Bear, how do you get the fleas off? <laughs> how egg excellent. <laughs> I, I hope you haven't misclicked from this video after that amazing egg pun. But this is Skillfully for another episode of The Flea Circus. For those of you wondering if I will be getting back to Mr. Bear and his plagiarizing antics, don't worry, another video will be coming about this bear. But let's not focus on that for now. Let's focus on a different story, one that answers a question or tries to. What is a creepypasta? Does it have to be creepy? The short answer is no, it doesn't, because that would be a crappy pasta. And there's plenty of crappy pasta out there, written by people who just want to try it. And ultimately, a lot of them don't understand how creepy pasta is structured. I myself have only written one creepy pasta before, and I don't even know if it's any good. But I understand what makes a creepy pasta great, in some way, or at least the understanding of how I can appreciate it. This is a weird one, though. One that wasn't written originally as a creepy pasta, but one that, nevertheless, is still creepy in some way. For those of you who have not read an egg, I highly recommend it. So I will give you a brief synopsis. A man dies and goes up to a perceived heaven. Where there is a god. He asks God if his family will be okay, and God is pleased one, and um, is very happy to hear that he cares more about his family than his own life. They walk around and talk for a bit as the protagonist learns more about the meaning of life. When God tries to explain his existence to him, he gets a loud sound that's incoherent and ultimately he can't understand it. But finally, in the climax, God reveals something that's very interesting. That the protagonist is actually all of mankind. So every single human being who has ever lived, or will live, is the protagonist in just different incarnations. This way, Every good action the protagonist has ever taken, he did to himself. And every negative thing he has ever done, he's done to himself. The story ends with the main protagonist being reincarnated as a young Chinese girl in 540 BC. Now, if you actually read the creepypasta, it is very bone-chilling. And maybe that's all creepypasta should be. So, by definition, a creepypasta are internet horror stories, like kind of like campfire stories, but not really. In a sense, they are just short little stories that could vary in length. Some are shorter, a few are longer, like 1999. Let's not bring up that one. That brings back bad memories. But the question that I just quickly wanted to ask is, is an egg a creepypasta, or does it belong as a creepypasta in the creepypasta wiki? My main answer, the first answer that's obvious, is no, this is not a creepypasta. An egg is written by an author whose name is Andy Weir, and he's written a lot of stuff, including the, um, the novel The Martian, or Martian, whatever it's called, or no, it is the Martian, and they're making a movie about it, so he uh, he's a very famous author at this point, and originally the NA was just a short story written by him, and if you read the story, it's not intentionally creepy. But what is creepy about an egg is the idea of it, about how creepy it is, about how a simple egg and how this story makes a whole lot of sense. This would really explain how all the religions are correct. If there really is a god, and one religion has been correct this whole time, surely all of the other religions would have faded away, leaving the one true religion. But this story indicates a way how there could be a god and multiple religions. 
all the religions are right in their own way. That is a quote directly by God himself in this story. Some people don't find this story particularly scary. There's no boogeyman or killer or thing that jumps out and gets you. No, this creeps you out with an idea. And that's where the fun of this story is. The fact that it can creep you out with something as simple as an idea and something as simple as an egg. So my answer to this question is an egg a creepypasta? And does it belong on the creepypasta wiki? It's not a creepypasta, but it makes you think. And the implications of it, depending on who you are, can be creepy. So, I recommend you read this story for yourself before you make those judgments. Like I've said in the past, just because I say something doesn't mean you should just accept it. If you want to know if this story should be creepy or should be a creepypasta, then you should go and read it yourself. I highly recommend it. It's a very, very good short story. So with that, I am Skillfully. The Skillfully Circus, or Flea Circus, will be opening soon, hopefully. And this is me signing off, for now. Tune in next time for something different.